Lifestyle plays a part in epigenetics. True. You can have DNA for a certain disease, but through lifestyle, turn off that signal. False. I've heard this idea a lot on social media from genetics coaches and influencers and stuff, but unfortunately, I have to debunk it. If you have the genetic risk factor for a certain disease, epigenetics cannot override that. Let me explain. So imagine one of your cells. This cell is like one of the rooms in your house. Suppose you've been given an IKEA catalog to furnish this room. This IKEA catalog is like your DNA. Every room in your house, and most every cell in your body, has this same IKEA catalog. But depending on what type of room it is, and what type of cell it is, it's going to choose to build different furniture. This is how DNA works. It's like a catalog of proteins, and your cells can choose what it needs and start using those proteins. The catalog never changes, but the needs of a cell may change over time. Just like you might order more blankets in the wintertime, your cell might need more or less of certain proteins depending on what you're experiencing. What I'm describing is epigenetics. It's how certain experiences change the way your DNA is used. So no doubt about it, lifestyle is very important for epigenetics. But here's the thing. If you have a gene for a disease, that actually means you probably have a gene mutation that increases the risk of that disease. When a gene is mutated, the protein that it creates is basically broken. It's like if your IKEA catalog advertised a broken couch. So no matter how many times you order this couch, it always shows up broken and you can't really sit on it. And that's bad because when something isn't functioning properly inside of our cells, it can lead to disease. Epigenetics cannot fix this because it doesn't affect the blueprint of your genes, just how much they are used. No matter how many broken couches you order, they're always broken. At best, epigenetics can help store away some of those couches and instead replace them with other proteins that might do their job, like ordering more chairs. But that's not the kind of thing that you can just direct your cells to do based on specific behaviors, at least from what I understand. It is absolutely true that certain lifestyle changes can lower your risk of disease. But if any genetics coach or someone else tells you that they can override your genetic risk factors, I'm sorry, but they're full of shit. Please follow if you learn something and if you like real science.